It's a great joy to see you and to worship with you and to teach the Word of the Lord. We're studying one of the uh, most fascinating books ever written, really. And the more you study it, the more you get out of it, you know. And we know that you're going to receive a lot from it today. Uh, some of these men, like Daniel, had a re remarkable relationship with God. And seeing that God ever remains the same, you and I could have the same t type of relationship. And Daniel was functioning what we call the word of wisdom. God was giving him a word of his wisdom regarding the future. And we're studying about that today. And maybe, you know, five to seven hundred years before Jesus was born, uh, he had the information already. And, and so uh, I think we should seek the Lord for his spiritual gifts in order that we might function today. So many times they say he did it, you know, for him, he did it there. Well, he's just as willing to do it for you. I mean, uh, let God do something real good in your heart and life today. Uh, we have now studied the, the first six chapters of the book of Daniel. And the way they run is this. In the first chapter of Daniel, uh, he became an exile. Uh, and and a, a slave, I suppose you would say. Uh, they took him off in, arm, in irons from his country, from Jerusalem, and he was a prince uh, and of the royal family into Babylon. In Babylon, in chapter 2, the king had a vision of a great image which represented all the Gentile empires until this present moment. And, and uh, nobody could interpret it, but this man Daniel did by the Spirit of God. Then in the third chapter, things went into reverse, and that same kid, king, put three of Daniel's friends in a furnace of fire. We don't know where Daniel was at that moment. He might have been out in the province somewhere, uh, somewhere else. But these three stood up for God and came out of the fiery furnace alive. And that's in your chapter 3. Chapter 4, uh, God was getting sick and tired of the sin in the place. And the king had a vision of a great tree where all the birds of the air nested and so forth. And Daniel had to interpret that one because there was no one else with the ability. And he told him uh, that the Babylon was that tree, that if it, when it was cut down, um, it would be destroyed. And in that chapter, the king was insane for seven years, and God in his mercy re restored him to his throne. Then in chapter 5, uh, we find the, the end of Babylon. That great empire, the greatest of world empires, only lasted 75 years. And here our country has already lasted 200 years. And that empire only, only existed for 75 years. And um, then we, we read in, in, in chapter 6 of Daniel being in the den of lions, of how uh, his, his men that were working with him uh, as presidents of the, of the empire uh, caused a law to be made that made him to go into the den of lions, and God preserved him from that. Then we come to today's lesson when there is a vision of the beasts that come up out of the sea. And we'll take it verse by verse and you'll be able to understand it real easy. Now, you'll notice that uh, when the king had the vision of the empires, uh, it was gold and silver and so forth. But when the preacher sees them, uh, they're something else, they're beasts. And, and uh, you ought to hold that strong in mind that what man thinks is something, you know, big and glorious, God may have a different view of it altogether. Beginning in verse 1, it says, In the first year of Belshazzar, he was the last king of Babylon. And in the first year of his reign as king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream. And he, a dream and a vision of his head upon his bed. And, and then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Now, that's just opposite of the, uh, when the king had theirs. <laughs> they could see it, didn't know anything about it, had to send out for help, and finally the man of God had to come and give them help. But uh, Daniel here not only saw it, but he understood the sum of the matters also. Daniel spake, this is verse 2, and said, I saw in my vision by night. Now, he has told you that this is a, a night situation by this verse 2 here. That uh, by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Now, the great sea in that day was the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, all the great empires flourished around uh, the sea, the, the Mediterranean Sea, and it's called the Great Sea. 
It's not talking about the Atlantic nor the Pacific. It's, it's talking about the, the Mediterranean Sea that they went to Egypt where the first world empire was and up to Greece and over to Rome and, and, and touched the Holy Land where the, where the other two empires uh, controlled it. And so it was the great sea for the peoples of those times. And verse 3, and, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Now these four beasts represent the total of the four world empires. Uh, in, in all the history of man, there's only been four world empires. Now, as I told you, when, uh, when the king Nebuchadnezzar saw the four world empires, it was a glorious golden head, a magnificent silver in the chest, and then brass and then iron, showing their, their strength and so forth. When God showed them through his servant, they were beasts coming up out of the sea. Now, <coughs> the, word, the word sea, I uh, hear all through the Bible represents multitudes of people. So these four creatures came up out of the multitudes of human beings. They came up out of the masses of the people. Uh, and uh, so if you, if you know the sea doesn't represent water, it represents peoples. You'll find that in the book of Revelation also. And, and then that these beasts came up, which were empires, and they were diverse one from another. You know, they, there was nothing about them that was similar. Then in verse four, the first was like a lion. Now, uh, th that represents the Babylonian Empire. The first world empire was Babylon, and, and, and God said it was like a rapacious lion. Lion is the, is the king. Uh, the, the lion is the king of the jungle, and nobody gets in the way of the lion. He, he's the daddy there, and no, nobody wants to fight him there. And so the first world empire, which was the Babylonian Empire, was actually the greatest empire the world has ever known. It said he had eagle's wings, and this speaks of the, of the king of the air. The eagle is the king of the air, the lion is the king of the, of the ground. And so uh, he, he was double kingship. He, he, was a, he was a double ruler. And it also could speak that with the rapidity with which he could move. The, the, the great Babylonian empire, you know, they, they didn't talk about it, they did it. They, they controlled the world with great uh, uh, speed because of their strength. He says, I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, and that's when the Medes and the Persians came, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given unto it. And behold, another base. Now, that would be the end of that one. Uh, that told you how their great king uh, became an animal for seven years and was reinstated back into the throne again. God was trying, God has tried in every empire to get people to live right. God hadn't just started trying to get people to live right. God from the beginning has been trying to get people to live right. In every, in, in every civilization, in every culture of the world, God's been trying to get men to live right. And the only reason they don't live right is because men love unrighteousness. Are you here or not? Men love unrighteousness. And because they love unrighteousness, they don't live right. There's no difference in you than the Babylonians. Had the same kind of heart in them that you got in you. And you have to make your own decision of where you want to live right before the living God. Verse 5 says, another beast, now, this is another empire, and, and, and uh, another beast, a, a second, and it was like a bear, and it was raised itself up on one side. Now, this empire wasn't born yet. Now, that, that's the glory of this writing, that when Daniel wrote this, the Babylonian Empire was there, but the second empire wasn't born. And so you have to look carefully at the second empire. It was the, it was the Medes and the Persians uh, em, empire. Now, it raised, it raised us up. It was like a bear, speaking of its nature. And uh, a bear is a killer. It's a, predat a predator. And, and uh, that Persian empire was the same. It was a destroyer. It would kill any number of people to have their own way. And it says it raised us up, up on one side. And the reason for that is the Medes and the Persians were together. They, they, were, two na they were two nations. And it was an uncle and a nephew. Uh, the, 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 the Medes uh, were the older group, and, and the younger one and the, and, and the nephew was of the younger. And so it raised it up, up, up on one side. The Medes tried to get in, but the uncle was older, and the younger just clipped him off, and it became the Persian Empire and, and eliminated the other. It says it raises up on, on one side, it had three ribs in its mouth. There were three tremendous areas uh, that this empire uh, controlled, and, uh, and this speaks of it in, in that area there. 
at, in between its teeth, and they said unto it, Arise and devour much flesh. Now that gives you the key to what kind of people they were in that time for destroying humanity. Then verse 6, it says, After this I beheld, and lo, a leopard, this was the Grecian, Grecian Empire, of which had upon, had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Now, uh, a leopard is a fast-moving creature. Alexander the Great moved with great speed to conquer the world. And uh, he didn't live very long. He, he died before he was 33 years of age. He'd already conquered the world. And he had four generals that took over the empire. And that's those four wings. Now, for this to come into being before the empire came shows you that God can speak through a man and a man can know things unborn. The church can know things unborn. And if the church ever gets spiritual and desires to, it will know today the things that will happen tomorrow, next week, and next year. If you know it, say amen. amen. And it says the beast had also four heads. That means the four generals that took over the empire when Alexander the Great died. And dominion was given unto it. Uh, the Grecian Empire, as you know, was a very strong, arrogant empire, full of brains, uh, full of wisdom, had some of the greatest thinkers that the world has ever known in it. And dominion was given unto them. Verse 7 says, And after this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast. I want you to notice this one very carefully because he, he doesn't describe it very well. A fourth beast, he was dreadful, he was terrible, and strong exceedingly. That was the Roman Empire. It lasted longer than all the other empires put together. And, and uh, the remnants of the Roman Empire upon the world today, look on the back of a dime and you'll see the insignia of Rome on your American money. Uh, the Roman Empire is not dead, it's just scattered. And the, the, the kind of laws that we use in our country date right back to Rome. Many of the things that function in the Western world today are positively uh, Roman, uh, that are the fragments of the old Rome. It was dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. And all you have to do is read the New Testament to see how strong it was in destroying the church and destroying nations around about it. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the other beasts. The other beasts had a limited time. They were there. They were gone. The Roman Empire sustains itself and will have a renewal and a revival. The... Uh, the ten countries uh, that have made themselves a common market in Europe will rise up again as the Roman Empire. And, and they are already together. Now, I wouldn't say the exact ones. We may have one drop out and one drop in. Uh, but there will be ten of them. And they're already organized. It shows you that we are living in the last days of what we call a Gentile supremacy on the face of this earth. It says it was a verse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. That speaks of the ten different nations that will combine to make the Roman Empire. And it isn't finished yet. We're now living in the latter part of that vision and dream. He said, I considered the horns, and they came up among them a little horn. That little horn is speaking to us of the Antichrist that will rise up among those. Uh, to rule the world, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. That means that three of these countries will have to fall, possibly economically, and, and uh, then they will have to be taken over by the other countries. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. That's speaking of the Antichrist, which is to come, very likely is alive today, getting ready to move into the position that, that God has ordained that he shall be in. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Now, that's interesting. He, he saw the vision until the horns were cast down. Now, this is out in front of us yet. Now, you're getting toward the great tribulation time. And the Ancient of Days, which is Father God, did sit whose garment was like white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. And his throne, his throne was like the fiery flame. Isn't that beautiful? As I've told you before, Adam was dressed in fire, but fire that did not consume. And when you see God, God is a fire. Uh, Ezekiel said, from his loins downward was fire, from his loins upward was fire, such is the similitude of the God of Israel. And so, uh, there, there is a fire that doesn't hurt. And, and uh, it says, his throne was as a fire, and wheels as burning fire, and fiery streams issued and came forth from before him. And, and now, now listen to this, a thousand thousands. Now, a thousand thousands is a, is, is a million. Uh, ministered unto him, and then 10,000 times 10,000, and that happens to be 100 million. 
How many know you're not going to get lonesome in heaven? Hey. <laughs> and how many thought there's only going to be a few there? There'd be billions there. No, just a few. There'd be billions of people there. Now, you see, at this point, you have finished with the world empires right straight through the great tribulation time. And now you see the throne of God uh, that, that is set up and judgment was set and the books were open. And there will be a judgment. There'll be two judgments in front of us. Uh, there will be the judgment of the church uh, when they will not be judged for their eternity. They'll be judged according to their works that they've done. And they will be judged by what position they should hold in eternity. If you're not faithful to God here during all eternity, you don't wish to God you had a been. You hear? All right. You're going to wish to God you had a been because when the judgment seat of Christ is set, uh, then it's going to judge you by your faithfulness and by using what he gave to you. If he gave you a voice to sing, I'd recommend you start singing. Well, come on. If he gave you ability to play music, I'd give you the... I, I, and don't go by your feelings. You know what your feelings will do? I'll tell you, they'll take you to hell. I don't feel like getting up. Well, get up anyway. You get up because it's morning. You don't get up because you don't feel right. Tell your feelings how to feel. Feelings are not real. The, the devil gets in there. And they're not real. You tell yourself how to feel. You say, John. Excuse me, there'd be John's here. Let's call Lester. <laughs> uh, Lester, get up. Don't tell me how you feel. Get up. And immediately he feels all right, you see. Because your feelings obey your spirit. How many glad your feelings obey your spirit? I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, and I beheld even to the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and cast into the burning flame. That's what will happen to these ungodly empires. As concerning the rest of the beasts, uh, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Now he says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, that's Jesus. He came with the clouds of heaven. Now, to my mind, I'd like you to mark this carefully. It's one of the greatest portions of the Bible. To, to my mind, this is one of the greatest portions of the whole Bible. And when I meet uh, Jews, I very often ask them if I can just read this to them and ask them if they would kindly tell me what it means. And that gets real interesting, you know, when you, when you ask them, they say, would you tell me what this means? It, now, it's verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus called himself the Son of Man 78 times, and so we, he's easily identified. And he came with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient of Days. Who is that? That's the Father. And they brought him near before him, and there was given him to who? To Jesus. There was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, say all people, all. nations, languages, should serve Jesus. Now then it says, His dominion is an everlasting dominion. That means it's never going to cease. Which shall not pass away. His kingdom that shall not be destroyed. Now, <laughs> that 13 and 14 will really, really get close to you. That shows you how this world's going to terminate. And if you think it's going to terminate some other way, you better read the Bible again. Not only was Daniel true in these first kingdoms, some of them hadn't been born yet, you see, but he is also will be true in the final kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when in Jerusalem he shall reign as King of kings and Lord of lords forever. Glory be to God. There'll be no end of it. And I want to be with him. How about you? I want to rejoice with him. I want to shout with him. I want to live with him. I'm just getting ready to get started to live, to live with him forever. Can you say amen? But the pure in heart will see God. If you don't have any idea that you want to live right, you're going to live with the devil. All your eternity, you're going to live with him. You're going to have to live with God here to live with him over there. Verse 15, it says, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit and in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head trouble me. You see, he, he had this tremendous vision that we read about here. He says, I came near unto me, and I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all of this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. That was one of the angels of the Lord. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which are, shall arise out of the earth. Now, you see, I was telling you the truth about those waters over there. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. How do you like that one? The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom 
and they shall possess the kingdom forever. Is that long enough? Forever. But God thought you couldn't read very well, so he says, even forever and ever. <laughs> when he gives it to you three times, he, he hopes you catch on by that third one. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. Now, you see, that's the Roman Empire that we're messed up in even until this day. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't get a hold of that one. The fourth, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding the dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and the nails of, and his nails of brass. Think of that. Which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet of the ten horns that were in his head and of the others which came up and before whom the three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth speaking, spake of very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. There will never have been a man like the Antichrist when he comes. He will have the most piercing eyes any human ever had. He'll have the most bewitching ways. The whole world will follow after him. Nobody need not say they won't follow him. They don't know what they're going to do. When the Bible says you will, you better believe it. Only the best things don't be here. Be up there with Jesus. He says, I beheld at the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given unto the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and brick it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue the three kings, and he shall speak great words, listen, against the Most High. When we have the Antichrist. He's going to fight God. He's, he's going to stand up against God, uh, against the Lord Jesus, against anything and, everybody, and everything. There will still be millions of religious people here on the earth, millions of them. When the bride of Christ will be gone, but he will be, there will be millions of them here. He'll fight them, he'll resist them. And at that time, if you want to go to heaven, you have to die for it. <laughs> the easiest way to heaven is right now. <laughs> it's not going to get any easier out in front. He shall speak these great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto him his hand un until the time, times, and dividing of time. That means for three and a half years. The whole reign of Antichrist will be for three years and a half. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. The amazing thing to me is, friends, that over 500 years before Jesus was born, here was a man that knew all of this. And, and here you and I are living, you know, 2,500, more than 2,500 years away from it and, and looking at it in a different perspective. He, he was looking under the unborn and we're looking back into that which is already finished. And now, right at the tail end of it, we're going to see the final climax of it when the Lord Jesus shall be King of kings and Lord of lords. You know, it's just great to be alive. <laughs> it's great to be alive. If I were you, I wouldn't get irritated about little things. You hear me? I wouldn't let the devil irritate me, you know, because the water faucet don't work. And because your car didn't start well. There are much bigger issues in the world today. We're living in the moment of the rise of Antichrist. And he is going to rise. You're living in the moment when Russia is ready to march against little Israel down there and got herself ready for it. You're living in such dramatic moments. Uh, don't, don't lose sight of the forest because of a few trees. Just, just be sure you're seeing clearly the times in which we live. You're living in the most astounding times the world has ever known. So let's don't miss it. What do you say? All right. And uh, verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom of the whole, of the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. How you like that? How you like that? Isn't that great? Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. How many glad you're on the winning team? Hey, we're on the winning team. Glory be to God. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my uh, cogitations much trouble me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. There are times when God can do things and say things through you that you shouldn't be telling other people too much about, and you should never admit to confusion. 
If a thing is not clear, uh, God is on the way of making it clear. Uh, just hang in there low and, and humble before him, and God will make the thing clear. God wants it to be clear. You know, God has more sense than some preachers, you know. Uh, you know, some preachers give you about three sermons in one. And I told one of them the other day, I said, when a cup is full and you keep pouring in, what do you have? Then I said, you got a saucer full. And, and I said, why, why try to fill people more that can contain it one time? I, I find that, it, that it within 30 minutes, if you hadn't filled up a cup, you couldn't fill it up if you tried. And, and then if you go ahead, if you can fill it up and you keep pouring it in, you're wasting it. Don't waste truth. Save it for next time. That's reason some of my sermons are short, you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to give you indigestion. I want you to be back for the, next, for the next meal. I want you to stay hungry for the Word. Can you say amen? amen? How many love the book of Daniel? Isn't that something? For God to show you things like this are way out in front and for you and I to be living. Aren't you glad you don't live in the Middle Ages where you wonder what that was all about? But we're living at the end of time when we're seeing these things come to pass. And we are now ready for the return of our Lord and our Savior to take over the world. It's getting in just the kind of situation, number one, it needs an antichrist. And nobody needs to, seems to know how to run the thing. And then when the antichrist gets through messing it up, Jesus will come and rule and show the whole of mankind how it should have been done for the last 6,000 years. And man, it's going to be nice to be there and to live there, to worship there, and to serve our Lord and, and our Savior. Praise God.